In this video, I want to discuss the cross product. The cross product goes by other names. It is also known as the vector product and outer product. And so you can see sort of the parallels between the dot product, which was also known as the scalar product or the inner product. If we have two vectors, a, and a, so let's say a vector b, would we want to compute, which is the cross product, which we would write as a, then a, a large time sign across b. We can solve that a couple ways. The first way that we'll look at the solution, it is equal to a vector. The magnitude of that vector is the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the sine of an angle, which I'll describe in a minute. And it's a vector, and so it has a unit vector associated with it. So I have a and b tail to tail. Then this theta is the angle between them. So the theta and the sine theta is the angle between a and b once you've put them tail to tail. And that, of course, important because you never know exactly what angle you're given to when given a problem. This n hat is a unit vector, which means it has magnitude 1 and a direction. The direction is defined to be perpendicular to a and b in the direction given by the right-hand rule. If the unit vector is perpendicular to a and b, that means it is perpendicular to the plane containing a and b. Here is a and b is in this plane, which means that the unit vector is going to either point out of the screen or into the screen. And that's given by the right-hand rule. In this example, a is the pink pencil, and the vector b is the blue pencil. If I want a cross b, then I point my fingers in the direction of A and flip them in the direction of B. A cross B. Then my thumb points in the direction of the resulting vector perpendicular to those two vectors, which in this case is out of the screen or out of the surface. If I want B cross A, then I would point my fingers in the direction of B, but my fingers don't flip backwards. So I have to have my fingers this way in the direction of B, so they flip in the direction of A. B cross A. And in this case, my thumb points in the direction of the resulting vector that is going to be into the screen or into the surface. And if we do that, we find n hat is into the screen, or I guess we'll say into the page, sort of historically think about reading a book. If we have a right-handed coordinate system, say plus x, plus y, plus z, that would mean n hat in this example would be in the negative k axis. And then the magnitude is the magnitude of a times b times sine of the angle between them. There's another way to calculate this, and that's calculating in component form. Just like we had a, a geometric and a component form to calculate dot products, there's a component form to go along with the geometric form to calculate cross products. This has six terms, so this will go on a little bit. But a cross b is equal to the y component of a times the z component of b minus the z component of a times the y component of b, and that is all the x component of the cross product. This whole thing is the x component. So the y component then is the z component of a times the x component of b minus the x component of a times the z component of b, and that's all the y component of the cross product. And so then the z component of the z component of the cross product then is the x component of a times the y component of b minus the y component of a times the x component of b. Okay, and this is now the z component of the cross product. That's maybe something you write down and be able to reference when you want to do a cross product. It may seem complicated, but certainly if you have the components, this is going to be faster than trying to create the vectors and solve for the geometric form. There is a, a very sh a nice shorthand way to write this if you're familiar with a matrices and determinants. The cross product is equal to the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix, where the first row are the Cartesian unit vectors, the second row are the components of A, 
and the third row is the components of B. If you haven't seen that before, all this is is a compact way of writing what I've written right above. One of the most important features that distinguishes it from the scalar product is it's not commutative, which means A cross B is not equal to B cross A. In fact, if you were to calculate it, A cross B is equal to negative B cross A. That's one important distinction. The order of the uh, operation matters for the cross product. Qualitatively, what the cross product is telling you is the sizes of the vectors and the degree to which they are perpendicular. A cross B is equal to zero if A and B are parallel or anti-parallel. If they're pointing along the same line, then the theta between them tail to tail is zero or 180 degrees, and sine of 0 and 180 is 0, so the cross product is 0. And if they're perpendicular, then the magnitude of the cross product is simply the product of the magnitudes themselves, because that implies theta is 90 degrees and sine theta is 1. The magnitude is maximized when A and B are perpendicular to each other. Another way to think about that, what I want to do is find the component of A that is perpendicular to B. If I draw axes that are parallel and perpendicular to B, and I find the component of A that's perpendicular to B, that's the length of this yellow line. Well, what is that length? Well, it's the magnitude A times sine theta, where theta is the angle between A and B. And so if I look at my cross product, A cross B is equal to A sine theta times b, and then the unit vector. So the magnitude of the cross product is the magnitude of b times the magnitude of a perpendicular to b. So it, it goes the other way. We'll draw an extension of a line parallel to a, and then a line perpendicular to a. I can look for the component of b perpendicular to a, and so the length of that red line is b sine theta. And so again, if A cross B can be written as B sine theta times A times the unit vector. And so A cross B can be considered the magnitude of A times the component of B perpendicular to A, then times the unit vector determined by the right-hand rule.